These stable diffusion models might blow your mind. Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today I have a quick video for you that is super effective and we are going to talk about the ProtoGen models. Now these have been trained by a user called Darkstormers and this is on CVT AI where you can download these models. The design of the page is really easy and is very very usable because you can see he has trained here multiple different models for multiple different purposes. Anime, photorealism, down here we have other like e Eclipse, Dragon, Official. So when you click on them, they give you more information. This is not the version of Stable Diffusion. All of that is trained on 1.5. This is for anime, but you can do also other stuff, not just anime. Official release, of course. You can scroll down here, get some more information. So all of this is very, very helpful. Now, one tip I want to give you right from the start is you see here this little eye. When you click on that, this will give you the prompt, the negative prompt and all of the settings here that have been used. And you can call copy that over with just clicking down here on copy generation data. Now this is a really good starting point to get you into how to use these models and get really really nice results but also these use some very effective and long negative prompts here that give you a very good guide on how to work with negative prompts and you can of course also use them for other purposes for other renders. Now to download everything this is pretty easy you go over here and there you can choose from two different versions. There is a pickle tensor which is the classic CKPT file that you can use with Automatic 11.11 or with Invoke AI. And then there is also Safe Tensor. This for now only works with Automatic 11.11. So if you want to use it with both, rather download the Pickle Tensor file. You can see that these files are rather large. So this, for example, is 3.97 gigabytes, but the other ones are even larger, 5.57 or even 7.17. So they can become pretty big. When you want to use them with with Automatic 11.11, it is easy enough. You simply download the models into your local Stable Diffusion folder, in there into the Models folder, and in there into the Stable Diffusion folder. And then you start Automatic 11.11 just like normal, and you have it up here in the list nothing else needs to be done. Now in Invoke AI, the story is a little bit more complex. You go here to this cube and then you click here to add new and you look for the folder inside of Automatic 11.11 or wherever you have saved that model. And then you click here on scan again or on scan when you scan it the first time and you select all of the models here that you want to add. Then close this and you have this list here on the side. Now what you want to do is you want to go here to the model that you you have loaded and over here you need to add two things. First of all here you have a config for a YAML file. Now Invoke AI is providing YAML files and you can see here it's inside of the Invoke folder. There is a configs folder, in there is a stable diffusion folder and in there you find different YAML files. If you want to render images which these models are for you want to use the inference YAML. And then down here you also want to have the VAE file. Now this is also inside of the invoke folder. You can see here inside of the models folder in there, the LDM folder in there, the stable diffusion V1 folder and in there, you have a VAE file that is also in the CKPT format. So simply copy that link over into here and then click here on update model. So all of that information is there. After you've done that, you can click and close that window and simply select the model here from your list. Very easy. Now, as you might see here on the left side, we don't have a negative prompt field for Invoke AI right now. If you want to have something as a negative part in the image in your side view prompt, you can use square brackets for that. But to be honest, when you look at this render here and you can see it's really beautiful from the quality, I think that actually Invoke AI, even though it does not use the negative prompt part, actually created a more beautiful image with the same seed as Automatic 11.11 did with the full positive and negative prompts. So that was quite surprising for me and also Invoke AI on top of that has a lot of additional features. For example, that right here in the text to image generation, you can use upscaling and you can use face restore without having to change over to other windows. Now, before you get started downloading these models and playing around with them, I want to give you some additional information because on each of these pages, you can scroll down here and you get some additional 
additional good information, you have your live demo that you can click on. When you do this, you're going to the Hugging Face page and here the model is already loaded inside of an automatic 1111 interface so you can play with that online without having to install anything. This is more like a test run, a demo, but it gives you a good preview and you can see if this is good for the kind of works that you want to create. On top of that, you have here some additional information for the licenses listed below. And this will actually give you an insight on what kind of models have been merged here to create these protogen models. Now, this might be really interesting for you in case you know these models or in case you want to do your own merges using these models, because this can give you some very good hints on what are the abilities and what you can do with them. In addition to that, you get down here some advice on how to use different ways inside of your prompt. With these round brackets, you can add the weight to certain parts of the prompt. So in this case, we're talking about fun camera prompts, for example, from above, from below, from the side, from behind, or movement controls like hand on hip or sitting, where you can control the camera and the posing of the character as features of this model. So this can be very useful and absolutely experiment with that. And also inside of automatic 1111, I want to show you an additional trick. So for example, let's have here the first word model shoot. Now we highlight that by double clicking it and then hold the control key on your keyboard and press the arrow key multiple times upwards and you can see it creates a round bracket with a colon 1.0 and when you press again this is moving it upwards now we have 1.3 or when you press the downwards arrow this is going down so now for example we have 0.6 which is reducing the weight but it's at the same time not a negative prompt. So with these weights you can actually have a lot of control over the different elements in your prompt and in your image to fine tune the output output that you're getting. You can of course use the same weights inside of Invoke AI, but it doesn't have the same shortcut for that. And here what I want to advise you to do to fine tune and play a little bit around with different smaller variations is to go down here to variations, turn it on and for example, set it to 01 or 0.01. And this will give you very small variations in the seed and in the output. So you can get a very, very similar picture, but a little bit different that might be better than what you can create just with the prompt. Have a lot of fun with the Protogene models. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.